when you receive your ozone generator, it's going to come in a brown shipping box. And the first thing you want to do is inspect to see if there's any damage. And if there is any damage, uh, contact our customer service team uh, right away because it could indicate that the unit inside is damaged. Uh, so if there's no damage, go ahead and open it up. Inside the box you will find a three-pronged power cord, your ozone generator, an instruction manual, and a packing list. Unpack your ozone generator. So there it is. Basically, you to turn it on, you have a dial, and you can either use the built-in timer, which goes up to 120 minutes, two hours, or you can turn it on permanently. So if you look at the dial, the thick dimpled part, that's the pointer. So to use the timer, rotate it clockwise to your desired setting. And if you want to leave it running uh, for longer than two hours, basically you can use the hold function. So you, to use the hold function, turn it counterclockwise from the off position. That engages the hold function. So you use the hold function if you're treating a space that is exceptionally large where um, a two hour treatment is not long enough. So for example, say you're treating a small warehouse or a large home, and you might want to use it for three four hours at a time versus the built-in two hour timer. The built-in fuse and the second fuse is actually located right here next to the power plug. So to get to the spare fuse, basically get a screwdriver and uh, the spare fuse drawer slides out and inside you'll find the spare fuse and the live fuse. Should your uh, unit ever stop working, check the fuse, uh, swap it and usually that gets it going again. Alright, so once you unpack your unit, and you're ready to plug in, unpack your cord. You'll want to make sure you press the cord in firmly. Uh, the connection is fairly stiff, so you'll have to press in fairly firmly to make sure you get a good solid connection. If you don't do that, you might find your unit turning on and off sporadically. And all that means is that the cord's not pushed in all the way. All right, so let me plug this in, and uh, I'll give you some tips Alright, so just plug it in. Right, now that the unit is plugged in, um, again, the amount of time you run the unit for will depend on the size of the space and the severity of the order. So if you're treating, a, uh, let's say, a car or a small room, uh, you probably won't want to run the unit for 40 minutes to an hour at a time. And what you do is you let it run for an hour, the timer will count down to zero, after it finishes running, let the ozone dissipate for another hour or so, and that'll help it penetrate uh, fabrics and um, other material that might have odor ingrained in it. And uh, yeah, once after that hour, hour is over, go back inside, air out the room or the car, and assess the odor. If the odor is still there, it may need another cycle. But it's more effective to run the unit in cycles because what that does is it lets the ozone generator have fresh oxygen to produce ozone because what the unit does is actually breaks down oxygen molecules and converts them into ozone. So without fresh oxygen, the unit can't produce fresh ozone. So when treating a space, it's always best to run at the unit in cycles versus uh, long periods at a time. So if you're treating a room or a car, 40 minutes to 60 minutes. If you're treating a larger living room or a, um, a level of a house, you might want to run it for 80 minutes to 120 minutes. And if you're treating a home, the best place to put the ozone generator is near the cold air uh, intake of your central air. And what that will do, if you turn your fan on, it will spread the ozone throughout your home. And uh, yeah, it'll just help it penetrate all, your, all the walls in your home. Um, so that's basically it. Also, just a reminder, you don't want to be in the same space you're treating. Uh, that includes animals as well. Uh, the amount of ozone that this unit puts out will create a high enough concentration in the air 
that'll make the air irritating to breathe. So it's kind of like too much chlorine in a pool. You go, yeah. A little bit of ozone is nice, but once you get up to the amounts that this unit produces, it makes the air irritating to breathe, and you really want to wait till the unit's finished running and wait another hour after it finishes running for the ozone to dissipate before you go back inside. Um, and that's basically it. If you have any questions, we're definitely here to help. So please do contact us and uh, we'll help you out. So with all four screws removed, the top cover will slide right off. And inside you'll find your ozone module, the timer, the fan, and the ozone plate. And the ozone plate is what actually creates the ozone. And for maintenance, if you use the unit regularly, uh, say more than a few times a week, then it is good to wipe it down with an ammonia soap rig every three to four months. And that will just help clean off any dust or other particles that settle on the plate. It will help it produce a max amount of ozone every time you use the unit. So both the OP5000 and the OP3500 use a similar plate design and the maintenance procedure is the same for both units. So if you use it on a regular basis, um, maintain it regularly will help it increase its lifespan and increase the ozone output. But that's basically it. Once you're done cleaning your plate, make sure you let it air dry before uh, plugging it back in and uh, you're good to go.